Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis, and today I have a production version of the Emax Nighthawk Pro 200. Kind of excited because I get to see what this one flies like an off the shelf copy. The original one that I had was a prototype version, the pre release version, and uh, it wasn't even available yet. There were some issues with my original one, but it flew great after I did some tweaks. I pulled this run or this uh, original uh, HS 1177 camera off. Mine was blown out and I couldn't change the brightness contrast to fix it. So I had a faulty camera. Now I'm going to be able to test it with this camera because it's working correctly. Um, so that's great that they have a working version in my hands now. Now this is pretty much the same exact setup as what we had before on here. It has these Emacs red bottom 2205, 2300 KV motors on here. They're not the uh, super high KV 2600, 2700 versions. You don't see that little um, leaf logo on the very top, but these are sort of a FPV community favorite. These have been favorites for a lot of people, mainly because they're cost effective, they're cheaper, and they perform pretty well out in the field. They have a ton of punch for a five inch prop. Now the original props that came with this quad were these yellow props, and these are super durable. They were almost great with the original default PID tunings on here. There's not a whole lot of vibration in the camera. And they were super durable and a pretty smooth prop, actually, flying really, really quiet on this quad. So I like the props that came with it. If you get this quad, you can fly these props, no problem. They are great. But we're going to try something different on the quad today. We're going to actually try some of these multi-leaf props that I got from GearBest this week. And I'll show you the box. It's a huge box. There's probably five sets of them in here. Uh, Multi-colors in the box. I've got orange, green, and red. And I'll try to put a link down below for these. Uh, but these look pretty cool. They're really durable feeling. They're really thick plastic. It says unbreakable in the box, but I'll be the judge of that. Uh, they look strikingly similar to my Racecraft props, and this has been one of my favorite props out there, but I think these are around $350 to $4 a pair, so um, they're a little more cost effective, but we're going to see how these perform on this Nighthawk Pro 200. So we'll see how they do out in the field. Now I have another company that sent me some stuff. This is Hobby Tiger and this is a 4S. This is a 100C battery, 1350 milliamps. So this is the battery that I'm going to run on it exclusively for this test. Um, so far this battery looks pretty nice. It's actually a little smaller than some of the other 1300s that I have. Um, so a little smaller profile is great. Save a little bit of weight and I really don't think you need to run something like a 1500 on this quad it'd be kind of overkill a little bit big um for for this so lighter is better because you're going to get a better power to weight ratio so uh, with that also hobby tiger sent me this little uh, case over here this is kind of cool i'll show you the guys this open this up and i haven't seen um a fireproof bag uh, or a fire retardant bag like this one yet this one has separated cells so that each individual battery has its own cell so hopefully what would happen is if you had an issue with one battery it doesn't spread over to the next and catch a whole bag of them on fire so uh, this is kind of something different than I've seen out there for lipo bags uh, and kind of cool because it separates each lipo in, in there so that's kind of nice it just folds over like this and it keeps my batteries separate and that's kind of important uh, if you're flying or you have an, an issue with one battery it doesn't spread over and that's that's kind of cool so separate cells in there hopefully that those uh, work out like that hopefully it didn't burn through to the next cell uh, because they are just stitched, but the idea is that you contain one fire in one cell here. So you have to. I'm not going to test that out. I'm not going to set it on fire, but a uh, pretty cool bag from Hobby Tiger. And I'll try to include the link below so you guys can check those out. But this quad wasn't hard to set up. It loaded right up in beta flight. I have an SP Racing F3 flight controller on here and if you're new to this this is a great quad to get started with because it has some pretty standard specs on here that are uh, high quality in my, in my opinion as far as 
the power system. It's it's going to fly really well on the SP Racing F3 flight controller. You have BL Heli S ESCs inside here. You have 25 amp, which is plenty enough for 4S. And you also have a vented underbody under here for keeping your ESCs cool, which is super important because the summer months are here. Uh, it's almost June already, and uh, ESCs, once they overheat, you have a big problem, especially inside a shell like this. Any quads that have ESCs that are inside some, some kind of shell need to be uh, vented at some point to keep them from burning up. Uh, you also have these little bumpers on the bottom and a motor guard around the front here. That's kind of nice to keep your motor bells nice and safe when you do crash. And you have a pretty decent camera shroud in here. It's keeping the camera tucked inside here pretty nice, but you have a shorter sort of uh, camera couch up here. And you're gonna have to add a piece of foam here maybe to prop your camera up because you don't wanna shoot with your camera flat on there. And it's short enough to sort of receive one of these uh, cube style cameras. So I've got a run cam three here that we're gonna run for this test. And I'm just gonna put a little piece of foam underneath it to prop it up uh, so you guys can see some decent video today. And I'm also gonna test out Emacs's new Pagoda 2s on here. This is a right-hand circular polarized antenna. These are super sweet. I don't know if you guys have seen these or not, but I like them a lot. There's a longer version of this if you want. Uh, I'm also using these on my goggles now. They're actually pretty nice. Um, a little smaller profile than some of the other sort of traditional clover leaf antennas. Like I have a fat shark here, and this is sort of a kind of a 2014 looking antenna stem at this point. I mean, see how much different that is. That's amazing. Um, two years ago, we thought we needed something this long, but we quickly realized that we don't have to have that much of a stem on there. So kind of nice that everything seems to be getting smaller, even smaller than the TBS antenna right here. Uh, so a little smaller profile, a little more compact. They also make a shorter version of this one too, uh, just to be fair. So we're going to go ahead and screw that one back on the back there. Now on the very back of this quad, it's kind of cool too. They have built-in LEDs and they have LEDs built in underneath each arm and each motor that light up red in the back. We plug in the quad and show you. So pretty cool. Everything is already on here. Guys that like LEDs, you got plenty of LEDs on this quad. Red in the rear, white in the front, and blue in the back. Now I'm not 100% sure if these are changeable inside Betaflight, but it would be super cool if they were. Now I also heard that this quad does have OSD on here, but it has to be turned on. So I'll have to figure out how to do that. And uh, if I find out, I will let you guys know in the comments below. Now this one, I have an XSR, and I was able to get this one tucked down behind the camera, which is great because the last one that I had, I had the X4R and it was just too big and it stuck out side to side, uh, very, very strikingly close to the props swinging around. You don't have much clearance in here for the props. Uh, you don't want anything sticking out back here. So um, it's nice that I was able to get my S bus S, uh, XSR receiver tucked in behind the camera. And I'll just take a little zip tie and make sure things are nice and tidy back there so that I don't have anything flying out. But that's probably what I would recommend. And then you can run your antennas out the top here. And if you want to add a zip tie here and make them stick up, they'll be less prone to coming down and getting in your props uh, and chopping your antennas off. So pretty important that you do that before you start to fly. Just use a little zip tie and some heat shrink and it'll take care of uh, these antennas when you do crash. Now I've got a battery plugged into it and we're gonna go ahead and show you how to change the bands and the channels on this VTX. It's actually pretty simple. Just grab yourself a little tool because uh, you can't get your finger inside this hole. But if you short press, you can change through the channels on the current band that you're on. And if you wanna switch bands, just press and hold for two seconds and it'll start to activate the band switch so you can go through all the different bands all the way from A, B, C, D, H, L, and back around to A. So I'm going to leave it on A, and I'm going to press again for two seconds, and then it'll switch back to the channel selection. So now I'm on band A, and I can switch through eight different channels on each band. So pretty simple to do that. Uh, also, for this little switch up here, I wouldn't recommend switching that switch to change uh, to 25 milliwatt or 600 while the quad is on. I'd probably do that while it's off. 
All right, guys, we're all set up and ready to go outside now. You saw a little bit of flight footage in the very beginning, and uh, I, I got to say, this setup ended up flying pretty well with these props. I didn't have any crashes or any problems flying it. The default PIDs handled really, really well on this. Uh, even my last review of this Nighthawk Pro 200, this is eons better than the original Nighthawk 200. Uh, way, way better frame design, and durability seems really high on this one. Uh, uh, I really, I really wrecked and crashed the other one quite a bit. Uh, I was a little easier on this one because I didn't have any real hard crashes with it. Uh, but these props, we're going to see how those perform. In my flight test, you'll be able to see how those, uh, how smooth those are and how much punch out I get when I do some full throttle punch outs and um, overall control and maneuverability. Um, like I said before, these sort of style props have a really thick center and a nice tapered edge. So that gives you max punch and a really smooth and quiet flying prop. It's kind of cool how that works out for this design. Uh, also on the back there, we're gonna test out that new Pagoda 2 by Emacs. I've been racing with those and flying with those a lot. And I think they're pretty good. They, they tend to have a decent signal. Now right above your head, it does have a little bit of a, a fuzzy effect, but that's typical with cloverleaf style antennas and these Pagodas because the best signal is out and around it, kind of like in a donut pattern. Uh, right above it, there's sort of a, a weak spot right above these antennas. So uh, when you do, if you fly over your head, which shouldn't be, that will happen on those uh, type of antennas. But over here, we have the Hobby Tiger battery. We're gonna give that one a test today. This is kind of exciting to me because I'd like to find something a little cheaper out there for a 4S1300. And these are 1350-100C, so I'm expecting that since this one's 100C, I'm gonna get a lot of direct current uh, out to my motors from this battery. It's quite a bit higher C than some of the other batteries I've been flying out there, uh, some of the cheaper batteries. So we'll, we'll see how this one performs today in the flight test, and I'll let you guys know. But um, so far, they're holding up, and they haven't swollen a bit. And, and I tend to puff batteries really quickly, uh, especially when I'm not flying any OSD. I just um, uh, abuse them a little bit. But if you abuse them and they start to swell, guys, get rid of them, as always. So let's go ahead and put a battery on here and go out to the field and give this Emax Nighthawk 200 a second flight test with some new gear on there.